Hey, I'm not the Guajardo, and I went from overdrafting my credit cards to changing my life around at 40 and building a seven-figure business, and I'm one of the passionate few. I think the interview went really well, and Omar asked some really good questions, and what I hope for is that one person is inspired by my story, whether you're young or old, that you go and follow your dreams, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Welcome to this very special episode of The Passion and Few. Today we have on a dear friend, none other than Nato Guajardo, who's the founder of Fully Covered, who helps agency owners and insurance grow and scale their business. But more importantly, he's an entrepreneur who's built a successful business into seven figures. And he's also somebody that's gonna share a lot of his wisdom and his story about not only how he was able to find success, but how he was able to do it a little bit later in life. And I think it's gonna inspire a lot of you. So no further ado, let's get right into it. Thanks so much for being on the show today, Nato. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. I'm excited. Absolutely. So first of and all, nervous. yeah, first of all, <laughs> thank you for being here, man. We're sitting here, beautiful oceanfront. Dude, yeah. Glad you made it here from awesome. uh, Texas, right? Yep. So um, before we get into your story, can you tell the audience a little bit about what you do now and sort of where you grew up and where your childhood kind of like began? Like where did entrepreneurship start for you as a kid or where did seeds of wanting to do stuff start for you early on? Yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, me and my wife own an insurance agency in Houston, Texas and um, figure out a unique way how to, how to uh, not only generate leads for, for ourselves, but also how to grow and scale the agency pretty quickly. And um, so I developed a program for insurance agents to help them out. Um, so I was born and raised in Houston my whole life. Um, the only time I've left Houston was military. I was in the, uh, the Navy for eight years and, um, you know, grew up in, in Houston and like, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs grew up, you know, um, very humble beginnings, um, poor. My, my dad was a waiter. My mom was a secretary. <laughs> yeah. Did you find that early on you, you aspired to do things like entrepreneurially or was it kind of, you were just kind of coasting a little bit early on? Or? See, I'm like, no, I'm different from other entrepreneurs. You know, like some, <laughs> and I, I get jealous sometimes when like these entrepreneurs were selling from like, they were little, they had the lemonade stand and things <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. Like that wasn't me. I yeah. mean, yeah, maybe I did a couple things like maybe trade things when I was little, but I never was really had that entrepreneurial spirit. And, and that's another thing like, I don't, I don't believe that everybody has that. It can be developed. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I just didn't have that growing up. And yeah. sometimes when I hear entrepreneurs that had that, I'm like, man, they had a huge advantage yeah. because they've been doing this their whole life. It was in them from the beginning. And um, maybe it was, I just, it just didn't come out. Yeah. You know? And how old were you when you started to kind of like notice that your career or your life was headed in a direction that you know you didn't necessarily want to go and you know you wanted better um so yeah, talk to me about that so here's the thing yeah. i've always so you do talk about intra entrepreneurial i did go through like little spurts where i you know I, I dabbled in things but that's all i did was i would dabble in real estate i would dabble in stocks and dabbling but once it got hard i would quit every time and um I mean, I didn't find success until later on in life. Like, yeah. I even, you know, my marriage that ended up in divorce, you know, I promised all these things. Um, like, yeah, we're gonna buy this big house and we're gonna do this and that. Um, but I was dabbling. You know, I, was, I, I would try something, like I said, and, and I would just quit when it got hard. I don't know why that would happen. I just, I don't know if it was, I maybe embarrassment, like if, if I go through it and fail, like, um, and it didn't work, maybe I would be embarrassed. I don't know what it was, but I just never was falling through with it. How and, old were you when you first got married? Um, well, I've been married. This is my third time, but third time's uh, a charm, right? Third time's a charm. <laughs> so the first time I was very young. I was in the military, and um, and the one I was talking about is is later. Is I was already 25, 20, no, 27 years old. That was my second marriage, and that's the one I, you know, I, I promised her all these things that we're gonna do. And, you know, when we got a divorce, um, I was I was actually resentful and, and, and mad at her. And, and it didn't take, you know, it took a lot of years for me to look back and say, well, that wasn't her. It was it was the stuff that I, I was doing, you know, that, and sometimes you gotta look back and, um, you know, some of, the, some of the things that happen to you in life is, you gotta take some accountability for it. And, and I didn't do that. I would always blame other people. And um, 
So yeah, I mean, what were you doing for work at that time in your in your late twenties? So when I got out of the military, I did IT work. That's what I was doing in the military, and um, I did IT work when I got out, and I started working for this company that would do IT support for companies. But what ended up happening was that I would go out and recommend things to the client, and the salesperson got paid, right? Yeah. So I would do this a lot until one day I don't know what happened. I I saw some of these sales guys' checks. I'm like, these guys make like four or five times as much as me. <laughs> so I'm like, hold on. I, I went to the boss, the, the owner of the company. I'm like, how can I become a salesperson? So he said, if you go out and um, you sell a certain amount, then we'll, you know, we'll think about making you a salesperson. So that's what I did. I went out and I, I, I met the quota. I became a salesperson. Were and you good at sales right away or no. nervous? No, I wasn't good at sales. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How old were you when you started in sales? I would say now I am, um, at this point, I am in my 30s, early 30s. So I didn't, I didn't start too late. And I, yeah. the, the, the way I learned sales was through audio tapes, like yeah. Brian Tracy. Zig Ziglar. The yeah. old school stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Which I don't know if it worked or not, but that's what I went through in the, in the beginning to learn sales. Um, but yeah, that's how I started in sales. I, I, I saw... In the beginning, it was for money because, you know, I saw that they, these guys were driving the nice cars, um, were getting paid a lot more than me, yeah. and people were, you know, they told me I was crazy to leave IT, yeah. which, <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's a, like, you know, like the best job in the world, but um, it's a steady paycheck, right. and you're going from a, a steady paycheck to yes. something that's Sales more. Sales person. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. Um, it was a it was a hard transition because I didn't get good for a, a long time. Yeah, I was gonna say, how long did it take you from you know your first year doing it to actually getting proficient at it? Did you think about quitting? Did you you know? Because it sounds like you weren't a natural. You're, no, you're here in your early 30s. You know, a lot of these entrepreneurial stories, people we've interviewed, you know, they've been selling peanuts since they were 18 on the streets, door to door. Right. So here you are, early 30s, trying to figure out how to grow your income, how to grow your life. And you know what? What was the struggle like? Was it like a year, two years to get the hang of it? Did you think about quitting? Did you get in your head a lot? You know, what was going on mentally at the time? So to me, it was it was a much longer process for a couple of reasons. Um, so when I got my divorce, it was around the same <laughs> around the same time that I'm transitioning to sales, which probably <laughs> caused another reason why. Like, oh, you're transitioning to sales now. You're not going to make any money. It's just like you know everything just happened during the same time. And um, was that was that pretty like the heaviest time for you at that time as you look back? Yeah, yeah, that was probably my, my darkest times. And I'll tell you a story, like, like probably the, the, the lowest point of my life is, um, you know, I got a divorce and me and her had a house together and she took all the, all the furniture and I was left with a bed, two TVs and maybe a laptop or something. Got a divorce, they broke into my house like a couple of days later and now they take all my TV. So literally all I have, <laughs> All I have now is a bed. I don't even have my laptop, it's just my bed and my phone. So, yeah. I mean, it was like that for, for a couple months um, until, um, you know, until I got some commission checks to, to buy some furniture. But the reason it took me a long time, I believe, to get good at sales was because, again, I didn't commit to it. And during this time, instead of committing to like work and sales, I committed to something else. I committed to I kind of wanted to prove my wife that I can go find someone better. So I started like going out, partying, and, and, and did that for about two or three years. Like I, I would go out like three to four times a week. That was, those were my priorities during that time. I would get a commission check and literally spend it all. And then eat ramen noodles for like weeks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, feast and famine. Russell yeah, calls yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Feast yeah. and famine, yeah. So I, you know, I did that for a couple of years until until I got tired of it and it was, it, I got tired of it and, and it was the point where I had a daughter at the time and one day, you know, we we're gonna go out to eat and I was already used to this because, um, you know, having very little money in my bank account, I would have to time it, like, yeah. you know, when to eat and when to get gas, you know? And I knew, you know, when I got gas, I was gonna get an overdraft fee and uh, it would, they would just stack up. So just in the back of your mind, you knew there was always an overdraft fee. And you're like, oh, oh, always, I would always overdraft, but I would time it, you know, I have my daughter, <laughs> okay, I gotta get this much gas yeah. to go pick her up and then go get her, some. but this time, like, I was overdrafted and I, I had a little bit of cash on me and, and um, you know, I took her to McDonald's or some fast food and, um, you know, she asked me, you're not gonna get anything to eat? 
And I said, no, mama, I call her mama. No, I'm not, I'm not hungry. But the real reason is that I literally only had money for her. Yeah. So, oh, man. yeah. And how old are you at this time? I am about 35. So you're having, <laughs> so you're having conversations with yourself. How am I at 35? Not able to, right? Like a lot of that is fueling your fire. Oh, man, that, that day I went home and I like literally started crying. Like, dude, I don't even have money to like take my daughter out to eat. So I made, I made a decision. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be like this anymore. And it was, I don't know if it was right away, but I, I remember changing and, and starting to read books and, and things like that. And I remember one book that I read, and, and, and I'm sorry, I, I forgot his name, the, the, the author of The Compound Effect. Uh, um, Darren Hardy. Darren, yes. I love Darren Hardy, yeah. He has another book, I believe it's, um, it's another book that he has. So he makes you do an assignment, right? And the assignment is, I initially did this for straight business because I wanted to improve in business. He's, he said um, one of the assignments before you get to the business part was to, to write down your perfect mate. And I'll tell you what, I was, I was going to skip that chapter because I'm like, oh, I don't need that. I'm not look. I told myself I will never get married again. Never. Um, and that's a lot, of, a lot of divorced guys that say, I'll never get married again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I told myself. I'm like, I'm just going to be a bachelor. I'll make a lot of money. Yeah, um, to myself. Yeah, 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 just for myself, my daughter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was going to skip that part, but I don't know why I went back. I'm like, because, oh, I went to the next chapter and it yeah. says, if you did not do the assignment, go back and do it. Uh -huh. I'm like, all right, let me go back and do it. So I started writing down like my perfect mate. Like, and I, after a while, I'm like, wow, it's like an hour later, I'm still like describing this person. And, and I thought after, you know, I finished all this, I'm like, yeah. I mean, if that person comes, then I will get married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, that, if this perfect person that I just wrote down comes, that's the only that's the only way I'm gonna get married. So, you know, I forgot all about that. I went through the business stuff, and slowly I, I started improving. And um, and one of my buddies got me into the insurance uh, business by literally like Wolf of Wall Street. He sends me his um, his paycheck. Right, he's like, dude, look how much I made this <laughs> two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And it, to me, it was a lot of money. At, yeah. You know, it was. Do you remember uh, how much it was? Twenty-two thousand. Twenty-two thousand. Yeah. yeah. It was. Um, shout out to my buddy Ryan, <laughs> if he's out there. Um, he well, he's out there. He's my best friend. Yeah. Um, so he sends me the, uh, the text messages. I'm like, wow, I've never seen that much money <laughs> before. So I literally applied that day and got hired. <laughs> yeah. I got hired like a month later. Yeah. Um, and started working for an insurance company. And um, that's how I got into, into the um, insurance business. Were you a natural at insurance when you got into it? Had you grown your sales skills by then or no? Again, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was an uphill battle for you at every part of the journey. Yeah. Pretty much everything I've done, I've been not good at in the beginning. Yeah. And, um, and that's what I'm telling you is before I would quit, right? And in insurance, it was no different. Which is funny now because some of my students are the people I worked with that were, did way better than me. They're probably like, "What is? I'm not going to join this guy." I was like way better than this guy when I was yeah. working with them. But no, I was when I when I started working for this company, I was probably in the middle to the lower as far as sales in my office. So out of 20, 22 people, maybe I was like in the middle somewhere. Um, were, you the, were, were you one of the older guys in there as well? Yes, everybody else was probably yeah maybe 10 years younger, yeah. five years younger. Yeah. Um, not the oldest guy, but on the, on the, uh, on the higher end as far as yeah. age. And then how long did it take for you to start finding momentum or finding your groove with starting to close deals? So probably towards, excuse me, probably towards the end. Um, and I didn't really catch momentum, honestly, until I left there and started my own agency. So after three years working there, um, me and management had our differences. So I... I left and I instantly regretted it <laughs> yeah. because, you know, when you start a business, you want to, pl you want to plan it out. You want to have enough money. You know, they say a certain amount of money to, um, to live off of. Well, I didn't, I didn't have that much. And not only that, a week before that, I had just bought my wife that I met at Liberty Mutual, which, uh, an engagement ring. So, wow. so it's, like I've already, I just spent a whole bunch of money, of my yeah. money, and now I'm leaving and starting a business. So, yeah. um, which I kind of got to backtrack because that's why I met my wife is uh, 
is that is, is that that agency? Oh, you met her at the insurance agency. <laughs> yeah, I kind of okay. skipped that part. Oh wow! So you met her when you so when your buddy like showed you the thing, you got into insurance and met who would be your wife. Yeah, I went there. So you that you owe that buddy a lot <laughs> for the. I owe that buddy part. a lot. Yeah, yeah. I I just thanked him the other day. Like, yeah. man, thank you for getting me in this insurance. This yeah. and he he introduced me to her also. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I could talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah. uh, meeting meeting my wife. Yeah. I mean, Do you remember the first time you guys met? Yes, I was interviewing. Yes. I was interviewing, and, and you had to go shadow someone. Yeah. So I, I shadowed um, her best friend, when she was like catty corner. Um, but from the from the from the jump, I I was I liked her. Yeah. I like, <laughs> I'm like who is this? Yeah. yeah. Um, not knowing that I would get the job later, but as you know, it's just knowing her and things like that um you know after a while she i didn't know i didn't know this but going back to the stuff that i wrote i didn't really realize that that she was the one until like just one day me and her were i don't know in the kitchen and and i just looked at her i'm like dang i remembered back when i wrote down every single thing about that girl and this is this is the girl yeah this is it (laughs) the words popped out of the page yeah man i looked at her i'm like Man, this this is this is who I'm gonna marry. And do you do you think that? Because I know you've told me in our conversations that she was also a catalyst for helping you kind of like level up and 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 kind of grow in that regard. How did the relationship serve you in terms of the business once you found her? Did did it help per se, or were you already in a good momentum? Or yeah, so when when I started the agency, I started it alone, and then she joined me later. One good thing about it is, first of all, she's she's in the insurance business. But aside from that, like she's super supportive of everything I do. Um, I don't think I've ever once remember her not being like supportive of something that I want to do. And I don't, I don't think I've ever had that. So I think just having that helps. Kind of gives you a little bit more confidence, right? If somebody doesn't, because I was, you know, every time I would tell her something, I was waiting for pushback. a pushback. Like, no, maybe you shouldn't be doing that, which I've heard in the past by several people right <laughs> yeah yeah and and i don't blame them because i don't have that tra- i don't have a track record right, right. i've always i've always dabbled in, in stuff and and quit and um so i don't you know i don't blame them but she never did that she's like yeah just go ahead and do it plan it out and and, and do it so i think that gave me the confidence to to just go ahead and, and, and do it and and a lot of times she'll tell you she's like you do stuff and like you know it's gonna happen, and I'm like, no, like that's yeah. not how it is. Yeah. Inside, I'm, I have s- so many doubts. Yeah. But to her, she thinks like, I'm super confident it's gonna happen. You have it under control. I have yeah, it under yeah. control, but inside, I have like a, a million doubts, right? It, it's funny you say that. We interviewed uh, John Paul DeJoria, founder of Patron Tequila, you know, multi-billion dollar entrepreneur. And I asked him, I said, um, do you ever find yourself, like when you're running all these, you know, two, he's running not one, but two. He's got Paul Mitchell and Patron Tequila, two multi-billion dollar companies. I said, do you ever find yourself going like, how the heck did I get here? He said, all the time. He said, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing most of the time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it, if you just start in it and start, you know, committing to things and trying things, uh, more often than not, if you do that over a sustained enough period of time, things will start to work and you'll get better and better. So yeah, that's totally true. Do you ever feel that some of these people that you interview, like yeah. they have fears that they might lose, lose all this at some oh, point? Oh, of course, yeah. But I think also, that's kind of what drives the motivation, you know? Right. Like, they, like uh, you know, when you, when you take like an MMA fighter, right? Or you take a whoever, it's, you know, it's, it's one thing when you're hungry to go get it. It's another thing to keep it. Once you have, you know, Conor McGregor, you get 100 million bucks when you're broke, king of the world. But now all these other people are looking at you, they're hungry, they're willing to die for it. So it becomes trickier to protect it. But I think um, depending on the person, you know, they can use it as fuel. Right. So, uh, yeah. But totally, totally. And, I, and all businesses, um, to some degree, have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> and, and that's okay, just good. a part of it, you know? So it's about proficiency in that. But I love that you're saying that, you know, for you, a big part of it was uh, your wife helping kind of like drive you and support you and stuff. When you started your own agency, how was it? Did you get in momentum right away or was that also kind of uphill battle as well? Well, one thing I was worried about and... Um one thing I was worried about was that because I didn't have a good track record at Liberty Mutual, you know, I was average, um, yeah. that she would say, maybe you should go and do something else. She never said that. 
um, so I don't know if she believed in me, she's or she was just like, I'm just gonna let this dude like fail and just you know, and then yeah. he'll he'll go and find a, a regular job. Um, but when I when we got married, because we got married the same year that um, that I started the agency, so we got married. Um, uh, a month later, I started the insurance agency, and then we had the biggest flood in Houston ever. So, <laughs> like everything, like hold on, you know, started stacking up. I'm like, well, maybe this this stuff is not meant to be for me. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> maybe this is a sign. Yeah, maybe it's a sign for me to go get a a, a regular job. Yeah. but I made a decision that this time I'm not going to dabble. I'm not dabbling in this anymore. I'm going to go 100 percent and if I fail I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go down swing right um, so I, I, I committed and m one of my goals was to not depend on anybody else to build my business and I'll, I'll give an example with insurance agents we kind of depend on other people to bring us business like referral partners um, buying leads from these leads aggregators I wanted to develop something different where we didn't have to depend so much on other people to to grow our business. And you know, I started going to conferences on how these guys were generating leads, and that's how I learned how to generate my own leads. Because I feel like if you can if you can market and generate your own leads and close those deals, that you can write your own ticket. You don't you don't need anyone anymore at that point. You don't need to buy insurance leads. You don't need to work for anybody else anymore. Um, so that's that's what I started doing, and and I started getting momentum. And after eight months, I I told my wife, us, you know, my wife made six figures at that place for ten years probably with four hundred one k pension, and um, she was actually going to take um, another job. And luckily. I, I was praying that she would not get the job <laughs> so she can come help me. Did you tell her that you were praying <laughs> for Not at the time. I told her when we got married. <laughs> but at the time you were acting supportive though, right? Like Yeah, of course. <laughs> not when we got married, but I told That's her later funny. I told her later on, like yeah, yeah. I actually prayed for you not to get that job. Yeah. Because I felt bad because when she yeah. didn't get the job, she started crying. I, I'm not gonna tell her, Well, I prayed for you not to get a job. <laughs> come work with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come work with me. So you know, um, so I said, you know, why don't you why don't we we do this together. Maybe, you know, we can test it out and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, you can always go get a sales job, right? Um, so it was a tough sell. Here's why. She's making six figures, 401k, pension. You know, there's no more pensions out there. She, she had a pension and... Um, and with your track record, you're my, like, come my, on, let's my go track, start something. My track record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, not only that, come work for me, and I, but I can't pay you anything. I mean, what, I mean... So that's probably my second biggest sell in my career other than marrying her. Um, so she, we did that. Um, and she was, she was a trooper, you know. And she was up for the ride. She was ready. She was, she was down for it. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she was yeah. down for a ride. And, um, you know, at first it was, the first couple of weeks it was a struggle, but we gained momentum very quickly. Yeah. Um, she had her own resources of bringing in leads on top of what I was doing. And it just, like, I don't know what happened. It just snowballed, and we we started doing pretty good very fast. So, was it the Facebook ads that you were running that were generating leads? I mean, what was the what was the biggest catalyst for generating leads for you that that ended up kind of being that that differentiator? So it was a couple of things. It was Facebook ads generating leads for myself, but I had a unique strategy where I was generating leads for our referral partners to give them value, so they can get more business in return. They would send us their referrals. Because with insurance, um, you know, we get referrals from mortgage people, from realtors. Right. Because when somebody has to close a house, they need insurance. So they would refer us business. So, right. you know, I always thought about what's a good way to give value first? Because I always want to give value first before I receive something. Right. Now, not, it wasn't always this, the case. But now that's, that's, my, that's my motto or that's, that's what I want to give value first. So how can I do this? And I said, well, what if I... You know, I started off with one referral partner, one one loan officer. I said, "Hey, man, let's let's try to run some leads for you and see see how it works." It ended up working really well, and I'm like, "Well, if I can do it with one guy, let me go get some more guys," um, because I always was taught to 
go to mortgage brokers and bring them donuts and see if they beg <laughs> yeah, them for yeah. their business. Yeah, yeah. Or do the lunch and teach. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 exactly. So I wanted to do it another way. And, and different than everybody else, right? Super it's different. A, which is a good example for anybody in any business that if you want to differentiate yourself and add value, think about, you know, what do those people actually really want? You were bringing them business, not donuts. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, I was, I was totally different. And I would approach these loan officers and tell them about what I'm going to do for them. They're like, all right, man, well, how much is this going to cost me? I'm like, no, it's nothing. I'm giving you free leads. I'm not giving you anything. So at first they were like taken back. Like insurance agents don't do this. They don't, they don't come. They, they come here and they want, they want yeah. stuff. They don't give. Yeah. So um, at first they were taken back, but after a while it, you know, we, we started getting a lot of referral partners. And, and you, were, you were, so you were running ads for them for free, basically? For free, in, yeah. in return for, for their business. Yeah. And, and I was happy to, you know, if we break even, no problem. Because with insurance, if I cross sell another policy, then now I'm, you know, now I'm profiting. And, and I'm getting the renewals next year. So I'm good with that. How long did it take to start seeing the returns on, on helping people and adding value? Right away. Really? Like very quickly. Yeah. Yes. Like we, weeks? Like mu maybe a, a couple months, like a month or so. Yeah, wow. very quickly. It, it, like everything was, when my wife came, for some <laughs> when my wife came, I'm not going to say it's perfect because we literally had a, a, an office, very, like back to back, right? Yeah. Me and her are back to back. And we, I think we argued every day. We probably argued every day. <laughs> but, um, but it happened real fast. Like with, within her connections and what I was doing, um, we were working late every single day and we we're happy to do it because it was our, now it's our business. And at that point, was that the most revenue you had ever been generating up until that point? No, we, yeah. we, it, it did take a while because we were making more working for uh, corporate uh, because we would get salary bonuses. Right, all that. It, it took about a year to replace our income maybe a year and a half to replace our income. Um, and what did you do differently when, you know, because I really want to zoom in on that, because there might be people watching this who are maybe starting in a new vertical, whether insurance or otherwise, and maybe they're kind of gaining momentum or they hear your story and go, shit, if he did it, I could do it. But where, where did the shift happen where you actually got really good at sales to where, I don't know, was it a six-figure income that the first time you hit it? Or, you know, how long did it take or what did you do differently to, to make that switch to go from kind of doing okay to actually, you know, doing relatively well at that time for you? So I think the first thing is, you know, I, I made a commitment. I, um, I made a commitment to, to follow through the whole way. And the second thing was find whoever that person is that's maybe one or two steps above you yeah. and figure out who that person is and see if you can get mentorship from them. Pay, pay them whatever you have to pay them. And I've been doing that maybe f four years now that I'm, I'm always trying to find that next person that's maybe one or two steps ahead. And even people don't even have coaching programs. I approach them, I'm like, hey man, can I learn from you? I'll just give me a price. And if the price works, then, then we work together. Um, so the first thing is you definitely need to commit and, and not do what I used to do is just dabble and, and follow through with, with what you wanna do. Okay, and then going back to the agency, so you open it up, you guys start catching traction. Took about a year to replace the income from what you were doing prior. Yes. And then uh, from there, did you notice a demand that other people were asking you, like, dude, what are you doing? How are you generating this revenue? How are you, you know, doing this? Or, or what was the, where did you start realizing, you know, because now with Fully Covered, you help insurance, you know, agents from all over the world, um, certainly all over the country, help and grow their agency. But wh when did you start noticing that people were like, dude, how, what are you doing? How are you doing it, right? Because yeah. <laughs> at first it was all you, and then you kind of started sharing your secrets. So how did, how did that process unfold? Yeah, so people started figuring out, um, they were asking me like, how, you know, how are you generating these leads for insurance and for your mortgage people? And um, insurance agents would message me and I, I would help them initially for free, but then I was getting too many people asking me, I'm like, well, I mean, I can't run, a, I can't run an agency and help these guys. So I started charging them and I started helping them um, do it. And then even that became like a problem because this, it was just too much to do that and run the agency at the same time. So one of my coaches, which, you know, I'm always saying like, I, I got I get a coach. He's the one that helped me with uh, Facebook ads that really tweak it to really get it um, where I need to. And um, once I met 
met him, he kept telling me, hey man, you need, to, you, need to, you need to develop a program for these insurance guys. And he asked me like three times and I told him yes on the third time. The first two times I said no because my mentality is, at the time, was why, why am I gonna show these insurance agents to do what I do and build competition? Like, now I have all these insurance agents doing the same thing. I want the, the, these well, secrets to myself. That's, that was my mentality back then. And after a while, I thought about it. I'm like, first of all, I, I can't reach everyone. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. I can't insure the whole country. Yeah, a billion people. Yeah, yeah. I, I just can't insure. Why, why not help insurance agents, you know, do what I did and, you know, also make money in the process? Um, so we developed the program actually a couple of days ago was our two-year anniversary when we actually started the program oh, man. congratulations thanks man. And, and i saw i saw your guys's two comic club award from russell and click funnels and all that yeah so for congratulations for surpassing seven figures man That's thank awesome. you yeah. appreciate it yeah um so yeah we, we we started the program and very quickly insurance agents were were joining without without anybody even knowing who i was uh, we just ran a ton of Facebook ads to uh, to market the uh, the program. Yeah. Now, what advice do you have for people who are watching this or listening to this anywhere in the world at any age, men, women, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, um, about, you know, them starting to feel feelings like, well, you know, I'm getting older. Everyone around me is already in their 20s. It looks like everybody's, you know, got a BMW or Lambo when they're 21, you know, <laughs> and like, you know, or they start seeing the landscape of the digital world, and maybe they're in insurance or sales or any of these other professions. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, they're starting to, you know, get maybe what you had, where like some of those thoughts were creeping in their head. What do you, what do you say to those people that feel like they're getting older and you know they're not quote unquote becoming as successful as they want to be? Right. Uh, you know, being on this side of the fence in your journey, what advice would you have for people on that? See, uh, I feel that if if you have a dream and and it keeps coming back, like it's something that you really want. It's because God or the universe, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, 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 he wants to give it to you, but he's just not going to give it to you without you putting that action. Um, I feel like the universe helps people that help them helps themselves, right? So, if it's if you keep wanting that, I, I feel like it's for you, but not without taking that action. And that was the issue with me is that I've always wanted those things. I always wanted to have my own business, but I never put that action. I never fully committed for whatever reason, fear of embarrassment, fear of what other people would say. And and I would say, commit to it, take that action and, and follow through Follow through with it. Because you started and stopped, started and stopped a lot, right? Uh, yeah, it wasn't until 39 years old that I just said, I'm, I'm gonna do this all the way through even if I fail. It, I was either 39 or 40, so it's, I was older. And that, that was literally the decision you made, line in the sand. I'm going all in. I'm going all Sink in. Sink or swim. Not, yeah, not only that, and not, I have the support system now. I have, I have a wife that she thinks I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Even so though, I got to act like I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah I got to act like I can. Yeah. Even though I have all these doubts inside me, she thinks, she thinks I can do anything. Was she doing better than you at the agency financially? You, at, when we were working at, yeah. at the, yes. Yeah. Did that also kind of fire you up, motivate you a little bit to no. kind of at least try to catch up? Uh, maybe uh, yeah. subconsciously, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I, she yeah. can't make more money than me. But yeah. no, I don't think that was ever the issue. The yeah. more, I think more of it was, I don't want to make, I didn't want to make promises like I did before yeah. and not and not fulfill those promises because I didn't want to get a divorce again. I mean, she's the girl that I, I wrote down in that that journal. So... I, I don't want to start all over it right, and mess that up. So now, if I make a promise, dude, it's, it's, I'm going through with it. I'll, I'll work a lot harder for somebody else than I work for myself, that's for sure. What about in terms of the questions you get the most from people about like how to get unstuck, right? Because it's fair to say, I mean, you know, it sounds like, you know, you, you had many situations where, you know, your account was overdraft or, you know, like you've been in, in rough situations where mentally it's hard. You have a daughter, you can't, you know, afford to get them food and all this. Yeah. What questions do you find that people ask you the most, whether it's insurance agents that you help or, or you know, entrepreneurs in general? What questions do you feel that most people ask you that you think um, 
is like advantageous for a lot of people to know in terms of getting unstuck? Like, is it just try again? Is it, um, you know, what was it for you? Just kind of like dusting yourself up and trying something again and again and again, or what was it for you? Um, it's, it's definitely 100% in your head um yeah er everything's mental and you know i had just i just had an event um you know a couple of days or yesterday and i noticed that the really successful people like their beliefs are like so much higher like i noticed that the higher the belief of they believe in themselves the yeah. more money these guys make i can yeah. tell like this guy makes more money because i can tell he believes in himself a lot more than this guy right here right. even though this guy's successful but it's you can feel the energy, yeah, yeah. You can feel like, like the guy is successful because he believes in himself, and that's one thing about. I don't know where that comes from. That belief. I think you have to go through those struggles to gain that confidence and then gain that belief. I don't know if it's. You, it's like a muscle. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's possible just to believe it, and and just do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you can maybe set small goals, small wins. And, and achieve those wins, you'll gain a little bit of confidence and then go to the next next level, next level. Um, I know people say dream, you know, dream big, have your goals really big, but sometimes um, when, you, when you set goals really high and you don't get it, your self-esteem goes right. down. I, for me, if I set little, little goals and I win, my confidence gets higher, my belief gets higher. And- What else can I do? What else can I do? Yeah, yeah it's just little. Loving. Yeah. Yeah, a and over time you look back and you're like, "Oh wow, that was pretty big." Yeah, exactly. I look back two years ago. I'm like, "Wow, I'm I made big strides." And and I tell people all the time, like, you can do a, you can change your whole life in a year or two, and that's what I did. Really, I mean, and, and yeah. you know, in two years I changed my whole life. If I would have told you at 25 with the trajectory that you were on, that one day you'd gross your first, you know, million dollars in revenue in your business, would you have believed that? At 25. Um, I would say I, I want that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would want that, but no, I wasn't. I wasn't even near that path. That wasn't even on your radar. Was, yeah, that wasn't even like that's just a dream. Like, no, never thought I'd be making a million dollars a year. Looking back, what what do you think are some of the things that um, you didn't do, or I guess wish you did differently, or wish you had done better? Um. I definitely did a lot of things right because I did a lot of things wrong before. Right. I probably did everything wrong before, so I'm like, I'm gonna do the opposite of all that. So yeah, yeah. I think I did a lot of things right, and that's what sped up my process. But one thing I probably would have done faster, a lot of times when you're, a lot of times you don't wanna spend money to, to get a coach or spend money to buy a course or something to learn. But you know, But people go to college for four years to not even work in that industry or not even be able to get a job. But then we won't pay a thousand dollars or whatever that amount to learn a certain skill. Right. And I would have probably done that faster. I would have I would have spent money to learn skill faster and got a mentor to speed up that process even faster, which I think I did it pretty fast, but I think I would have done it faster if I would have done that. I love that man. Now, what about with your students? What are some of the things that you notice that some of the most successful students uh, do versus the ones that don't do? Because right? it's one thing to you know, learn from a mentor, it's another thing entirely to implement it. So what are the common denominators you notice, whether it's, you know, because I know you have a team and, and you know, that whole thing, so whether it's insurance agents or people in your courses or you know, your programs or your coaching, um, what do you notice that separates people or what do you feel separates you know, the people that end up you know, doing well from the people that just kind of end up stuck in that cycle of tr always trying uh versus you know the people winning yeah it's it's i kind of i kind of explain it like you know if you have a a fitness coach and he has you know a hundred clients and he trains each client and and gives them the, the same workouts the same you know uh diet plan for them specifically and and you know, 80% of them succeed and then 20 fail, does, does, you know, does that program not work? Um, we know that our program works, but what I see that the people that don't do well is one thing, they don't believe it's gonna work for them for whatever reason, um, which I mean, I had the same belief also, like, um, but I try to make them believe like, if you do these steps, 
you'll 100% get these results because we've already had so many people do it. So I would say mindset um, is, is a big thing with anything and, um, and effort and work, the work ethic. Because you can have all the belief, but if you don't actually do what's in whatever that program or that course is, obviously it's not gonna work. Um, so if you, you know, belief um, and that effort is what I think are the two main things that why people don't succeed. I love that, man. Now, what about in terms of, you know, people listening, a lot of them, regardless of industry, might be interested in, you know, getting into generating leads on Facebook. Uh, you know, maybe some are, you know, in insurance, maybe some are not. Uh, but what advice would you give for people beginning to get into the online space to take advantage of generating leads, growing their business, uh, growing their, you know, any kind of reach that they have? What advice would you have for people about it who might be scared of the digital world? You know, were you scared of Facebook ads when you first heard of it? Is that why you hired the coach? I mean, uh, you know, what insights could you share for people about the power of growing their business online who might be on the fence or scared to? Yeah, um, I was never scared, even though I'm like an older guy. I knew that this was the future. And maybe maybe because I came from IT that I understand like computers. Tech. And, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. I understood that this was the, the way to do it. So I was never scared. But I will tell you some of the fears that some of my students have is putting themselves out there. And I, I had the same fear. It took me a long time to make my, my profiles public. Because yeah. <laughs> you know, the fear of like, man, everybody's gonna know my business, like everything that I do. Or they see um, my ads or they this. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, they see my ads and, and they're gonna make fun of me, which I ran this ad that, um, <laughs> with the Lambo where I rented a Lambo and I, I said I rented a Lambo it was yeah. it was kind of a funny video and yeah. dude I get I get so much crap from that <laughs> video and yeah. um, at first it did bother me you know I would go and fight the trolls like fight them back yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, now I'm like I just laugh you know yeah. I just laugh at them but I think it's the fear of of um, whatever reason is people getting to know you on social media and um, putting yourself out there. And I mean, I still deal with that. Like, you know, doing video, doing this right here is... is. You look like a stud, you don't look nervous at all. <laughs> Dude, but inside I'm like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that's the fear is that, you know, people don't want to put this, they don't want to put themselves out there because what are, you know, what's somebody gonna think if, if I do this, what, you know? And at the end of the day, Man, who cares, really? Yeah. But it takes a long time to get to that point where, like, you say, who cares? Um, and I totally understand that fear. Yeah. But the faster you get over that fear, I, I feel, the more money you're going to make. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah. Also, too, you know, I know you told me and you mentioned that you grew up kind of from humble beginnings. Yep. Um, did your dad, and I know God rest his soul, he just passed. My yep. condolences. Thank you. Uh, but did he get to see a little bit of your success and momentum? And, uh, you know, did, how did that feel for you? Yeah, unfortunately, like, I mean, I, I hadn't talked to my dad for a long time before he had passed. And um, I know he saw some of my success because he would, um, like, message me, on, like, on Facebook. So he was seeing some of the success. But good we, job, mijo. Yeah. yeah good, <laughs> well, I don't know if it was good job, mijo, because we weren't talking. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but when he passed, I, you know, I... I saw my dad and he, he was fairly, you know, he's in the six, he's not too old, but I remember he used to talk about all the dreams that he had, everything that he wanted to do. And unfortunately he wasn't able to accomplish that. And you know, when I, when I saw that, I'm like, I, I don't want to do that. And it's weird because prior to that, I had done an exercise where I'm literally laying in my deathbed and what would I regret yeah. not doing if I was to die? And one of the things was start a business. And I mean, maybe that's what made me commit. Like, um, you know, starting a business was one, and and not and and another another one was um, not trying to have a son, which I just had like ten months ago. So <laughs> I I got both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's you know it's really sad to see someone that has a lot of dreams and doesn't accomplish any of those. And that's why I'm going full force, working harder than I ever did, and. Um, cause I don't want to, I don't want to have anything. I don't want to leave anything on, uh, left behind. I want to try to accomplish everything on my list. I love that, man. Yeah. sounds like you're one of the passionate few. I am one of the passionate <laughs> few. <laughs> All right. Well, before we wrap up, I have one more question for you. Uh, and then we always play a little game at, at the end, which is pretty fun. 
but for anybody listening to this interview or watching this interview, they love your story, they want to learn more either about you, Fully Covered, where can uh, people find out more about you? Instagram, Facebook, where, where can people find you? Everything, Nato Gojardo. I know it's hard to spell, but it's N-A-T-O-G-U-A-J-A-R-D-O. Nato Gojardo, everywhere, Facebook, website, everything. So I love that. And we'll plug, we'll plug the links in the description below uh, for people to find out more information. Um, so my last question before we play our game is knowing what you know now, and I know you've still got a lot more you want to accomplish and, and you know, that fire is still burning in you. Yeah. Um, but what advice would you give to maybe that person looking for answers? You know, I know you touched on it earlier about how to get unstuck and kind of try. Yeah. But what advice would you give maybe to the younger, either the younger not so, or maybe, you know, I love what you said about your father, you know, not, you know, seeing like, man, this guy had so many dreams unrealized and I never want to live like that. Knowing what you know now, being on this side of the fence when, you know, at one point, relatively speaking, you know, you weren't winning per se, and now you're in a momentum of it. What advice would you give to somebody uh, about how they can start getting in that momentum, how they can start, you know, uh, making it happen if they don't believe uh, that they actually can just yet? You know, what advice would you give if you could condense your best advice? Yeah, I think the most important thing is to hang out with people that are doing what you want to do. When you start hanging around with successful people or, or people that you want to, you know, the things that you want to do, you automatically level up to them. Um, so the people that you hang out with is so important. I mean, I used to hang out with people that went out four times a week. Guess what happened? I, used to, I went out four times a week. Yeah, or people who were broke. Yeah, I was broke. Sh showing each other screenshots of overdraft fees. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's one thing. Associate yourself with, with people that are doing what you do. And I think getting into sales helped me a lot because it, it got to those those guys that are motivated you know they're motivated by money but they want to do better and so a lot of salespeople are into self-development that's what kind of got me into that so definitely hang around different people um, and get in that environment um, get into proximity with people that are doing what you're doing I love it man very cool um, so before we wrap up we always play a game okay. called first things first okay so the way the game works is I just rifle off uh, a word or phrase, and then you just tell me the first word or phrase that comes to mind. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So it's fairly easy. Okay. Uh, the only rule is that you can't repeat yourself twice. And I'll probably do that. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. All right. So the first word or the first word or phrase is what you hope people get from listening to your story today. Inspiration. What it felt like when you couldn't afford to feed yourself and barely had enough money going overdraft to feed your daughter. Is it McDonald's you said? It had to be McDonald's, yeah. Yeah, dollar um, menu. <laughs> yeah, dollar menu. Yeah. Um, but what that moment felt like for you? I felt like I don't even know what worse than a loser is. Like I felt like the bottom of just very low. I I don't even know the word for it, but um, very down. Like probably the worst time of my life. But also the greatest fire too, right? That's right. Uh, the first million dollars you generated. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, just happy. <laughs> yeah. um, your, new, your new Audi. Excited. What is it, an Audi? Uh, All right. All right? Yep. Yeah, the black one, right? Yeah. Looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the insecurities of your past. Uh, embarrassed. What it takes to be a great salesperson. Um, I can say a phrase, right? Word or phrase. Um, always make sure that you're looking out for the client is, and make sure that the product is going to be good for that client. Um, and that's what I believe is makes a good salesperson. Your fully covered program. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> and and what is it just so people have context who might be interested in checking so we talked a little bit about you know it's about uh, generating your own leads through Facebook but we do a lot more stuff it's about growing and scaling your agency how to use uh, VAs to to support your, your team um, how to structure your agency and uh, just basically everything you need to to grow it and I just I just give everything I tested in my agency first before I put it out to these, to my students. Very cool, man. And again, you guys can check that out in the description below if you want that. I uh, gotta give a quick plug, <laughs> just so people know where to go. Um, the biggest limiting belief you had? 
prior that I cannot be successful. It, was, it wasn't for me. The one thought that shifted it all for you. Uh, ramen noodles. Not, I, didn't, I didn't want to eat ramen noodles anymore. <laughs> what did you want to eat? Filet Steaks. Mignon? Steaks. <laughs> Steaks seven days a week. Yeah. And then the last question, what does passion mean to you? Passion means going for whatever is inside here and going for it 100%. I love it. Now, thanks, thanks again so much for being on the show today, my man. Thank you so much for enjoying this video. And if you found this content valuable, uplifting, and inspiring to take your life and your business to the next level, then I have some exciting news for you. Because the Passionate Few Academy officially launched our brand new on-demand training that you can access absolutely free at www.tpfacademy.com. Right there, you'll learn the number one way to grow your personal brand or business brand online fast. The same way I've learned from interviewing some of the most successful people on the planet right here on the show who've done exactly that. So again, don't forget to check it out, www.tpfacademy.com. I promise you, you'll be blown away. And also, don't forget, there's three ways you can connect with me further. Number one, you can text me absolutely free at the number on the screen right now and send me your most pressing life, business, or branding question, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Number two, if you'd like to be interviewed on the show, you can actually apply right now in the description below and apply to share your incredible story, brand, or business right here with an audience of potentially millions of people, the same way we've helped experts, entrepreneurs, and authors just like you. And don't forget, that opportunity comes with the ability to partner with us and help feed one million people through our partnership with Feeding America. Again, you can click the link in the description below titled Interview Application to find out more. And last but not least, number three, if you'd like to get consulting from our team and work with you to help you grow your personal brand or business brand, no matter what industry you're in, we can do that by simply filling out the questionnaire in the description below titled Consulting Application. And if our team thinks that you'd be a great fit, who knows, you may just be invited to work with us to help you take your business to the next level. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for enjoying this video. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. And until next time, live strong, live with passion, and I'll see you in the next inspiring video.